Uh, Zuller Pi says, so the campaign could be partly about politics. That is, uh, yes, otherworldly or otherwise, Zuller Pi. Because we do have, uh, it's set up effectively like a, um, like a naval vessel. And so things can happen aboard there, huh? Uh, Joestar, sure, w what's your question? Go ahead and ask. That's the number you wanted, Zuller Pie. <laughs> and so Joestar asks, is it odd that most of the characters I create, as well as probably others, are an aspect of their personality which they either don't show or one that they wish to represent, which they cannot do through themselves? Is it odd that most of the characters I create are an aspect of their personality, which they either don't show or the or one that they wish to represent, which they cannot do through themselves? I'm not. Mm, am I? I don't know if I'm totally getting. Oh, okay. That that might clar uh, clarify it a little bit, Joe Star. Um, an aspect... Oh, hey, Barbarian! Cheers to you! Bing! Okay, an aspect of your... Per no, that is not... Um, that is not uncommon at all, uh, Joestar. Many of us roleplay because we want to explore aspects of ourselves that we don't normally get to express. Um, it allows us to explore ideas in a context that we feel is a little safer or more acceptable. Um, you know, you get to put on someone else's shoes and walk around in them for a bit if you're role-playing. I mean, look, I role-play female characters. I am not female. But when I do role-play female characters, I do my best to try and understand what it is like to be a female in the culture that is represented at the tabletop. I don't mean the meta culture. I mean the the in game and the in world. Um, you know, is it oppressive? Is it? Uh, are there societal expectations, and and not just negative ones? Look, there are there are matriarchal uh, matriarchal societies. In that case, what are your responsibilities? Right. It's a good challenge. You know, it, it's a way for you to think about things differently. Uh, to challenge your preconceived notions about, um, look, sex, religion, and politics, the three big ta uh, taboos of conversation can all happen at your tabletop. So to create characters that are, you know, these these um, unexpressed aspects of yourself, uh, Joestar, that's not an uncommon thing. A lot of us do it. And, uh, Romonger, yes, a hive ship for Shay, Maddie. That's heresy to discuss. Brushes his inquisitorial rosette. Yes, well, it may be heretical, but you know what? It's job security for you as, a, as an inquisitor, is it not? Come on, now. I'm making sure you still have a job. Joestar says, for example, a character that I have created is a gruff 45-year-old war veteran with a battered past and a I'm too old for this attitude if you haven't if you haven't uh, served in the military or uh, or you're not a grizzled veteran yourself there's there's nothing wrong with creating a veteran like that you can explore what it's like to be this other person and to go through the things that the actual grizzled veterans that we know and love in our lives have been through 
Only degrees of guilt, says Romonger. <laughs> is that what the fortune cookie uh, dispenser in your uh, inquisitorial rosette is uh, dispensing for you now? You know, Romonger, I ran Dark Heresy for years, and um, a part of me, like, not not that I'm going to give up on D&D, &D, but maybe at some point in time I'll run uh, I'll run some Dark Heresy because that was a lot of fun. Is your Ordo's Creed. Uh, you're a vanilla Ordo hereticus, aren't you? Eh, get out of here. Get out of here. Anyone can be Ordo hereticus. Come on. Now, Malleus or Xenos? That's where it's at. <laughs> oh, <laughs> fond memories. So, uh, so yes, uh, I figured what we could do because we will have a mobile base of operations. It has a, a military um, monarchical structure, right? Its ruler is a feared tyrant. Um, it has a large fortress on its back, even though it's a bioship uh, cruising around in the ocean. It is a great old one itself. Known for its delicious cuisine, such as tea, Earl Grey hot. Current calamity, though, there are some corrupt officials going on. Now, do we know that as a party? Mm, not yet, and I think we can weave it into uh, we can weave it into things. And by the way, so while it's not uh, while it's not um, oh my gosh, why am I forgetting? Shame on me for forgetting the. Uh, the Ferengi on Deep Space Nine, uh, da -da -da, he had he had an inn. Or, I mean, like a tavern, um, a pub. Oh, you're a Grey Knight now, huh, Romonger? Well, okay, that that changes things a little bit. Not Odo. Come on. Uh, think, think. Anyone out there? Quark. Thank you, Diadems. So right, so like we have like a ten forward, or we have uh, we have a place like Quark's Bar, aboard our uh, our ship called the Cascade. Uh, only its name is called the Mysterious Eel. Ooh, <laughs> you can only imagine what goes on upstairs, right? Um, you know, a big uh, a big multicultural crew, although it is primarily halflings, stout halflings at that, and uh, half orcs. Uh, Joe Star has another question: uh, How to deal with a power gamer? As a fellow player, or as a DM, or can you can you set the situation, Joe Star? If the ship is self-supporting, growing its own food, a version of the Soylent Green scenario that might have been discovered, say the lesser half-orc race is being made into burgers when they die. I think that's what we're going to discover something along those lines over the course of the. Over the course of the campaign that we're plotting, Zuler Pie. So excellent, excellent scenario, and you're two steps ahead. And I say that with due respect. As a player in a DM, <clears throat> um, so as a DM, if if you have a power gamer, it's uh, it, it's well, it, and even as a player, it's easy. If you build someone who's a min maxer and is statted for combat and killing and kicking indoors. Role play with them more. What are they gonna do? They can't swing a sword at role play. Ask them, you know, ask them, and 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 tell tell the person to stay in character. Don't describe. Well, my character just scoffs and goes away. No, no, no. You describe what you are doing as the character, and role play through it. And also, look, if someone is completely statted and min-maxed for combat, traps exist, riddles exist, non-combat scenarios uh, can exist. Uh, Romonger, you call your uh, pub and cantina the bottom of the barrel. 
Now, is that one that's on board your airship, or is that your local hangout next to the uh, next to the hangar where your airship is docked? Yep, King, you make a good point too. Understand in what way your player is power gaming is important too. Why do they feel the need to power game? How are they power gaming? Are they are they going like a, a complete face instead of even combat? And they want to resolve everything by rolling maximum persuasion and saying, well, no, you know, I, I did this and, and, and I got a 20, so I should be able to just talk my way out of this. Because sometimes fights are necessary. Power gamers don't have to just be murder hobos. Okay, that is the pub on board the Silvana. Gotcha, Romonger. So is it actually on the bottom deck of your ship? It's the, it's at the bottom of, of the barrel? And uh, Dark Wolf, so yes. How is the ship powered, right? At level one, we are, we're these spunky, go get them, you know, fresh people to the world characters. And, um, and we know maybe some stuff going on. We're aware, we're definitely aware of the Cascade because we're, we've either booked passage on it or we're a crew member of it. So more than one restaurant, maybe for the upper class, there is the cream of the crop restaurant. I like the name bottom of the barrel. Great idea. Yeah, and, and there, there can be, a, like, a nice place aboard, because it, it's kind of a cruise ship. And, and you know, we say, we say aircraft carrier because that also conveys the militaristic, um, you know, the authority and, you know, the fact it probably is packing some firepower of some kind or another. But it could just very well be a cruise ship also. Whoa, memory lapse. Great to see you back. As a DM, if you're dealing with a power gamer, you need to set a tone. Still, it's true, even as a player sitting on the other side of the DM screen, the rest of the other players can help set a tone. Yeah. You know, what's the expectation? Because suddenly the, the power gamer is going to feel really weird if everyone just is role-playing around him or her. And they're just sitting there like, I came here to roll dice, not to not to talk. What's going on here? And then you say, well, this, this is our game. What, what, what do you mean? Joe Star says, since I had one in my previous session who begged the DM for OP stuff and nearly got our entire group thrown into jail because he got hungry by murdering an innocent civilian as a vampire, even though he didn't need to kill him at all, and just decided to keep it secret until the rest of the group found out which also includes our paladin, which has to protect the evil player because he made a promise to a genie god. Hmm... Well, at, at that point in time, you know, even out of character, you can look at the player and say, "What re you tell us, what reason do, do we need you in our party? Why would we ever want to stick around with a character like this? Well, honestly, if, if you just kill people, you know, wantonly because you're hungry, number one, why are we even with you? And number two, why should we help you or hide your uh, or hide your your monstrous nature? You're creating a negative play environment, and there's no reason to do so. So you tell us, Mister or Miss Power Gamer, you tell us why why we need you in the party. Make a case, and it better not involve well. I can I can roll really high, because that's not a case. That's right. What would JoJo do? <laughs> An NPC called it that when they came aboard. They made a lot of remarks about our ship and crew. We may have sunk quite a few of his privateer ships. <laughs> Interesting story, Romonger. So to approach to approach a campaign with this methodology, right? Think if any of you have watched Star Trek before, you know that most of the episodes are just that. They are episodic. They begin, they end, and there you go. Like a, a miniature story is told in that hour long episode. 
However, there's usually some kind of character advancement or plot advancement that takes place between each of the missions. Something happens. People get promoted, people die, people get pregnant. Um, we hear about through communications about wars brewing or about something else that's occurring. And over the course of a season, you get you get a, a plot arc, right? That when you can when you reflect back on it, yes, all of these episodic things have occurred. However, there's an overarching advancement that has still happened that could lead to, you know, the end of the season cliffhanger or something along those lines. King says, Tycho threatened to kill all of us as a response to why would we travel with you? Not exactly making me feel great about him playing a LA plus four race. But really, he's a slightly weaker way. Oh, a level advancement? Or no, level adjustment. Level adjustment, that's right. I gotta remember my third edition lingo. I, I'm... Uh, I don't know if it would come to it, but if if someone said, well, you travel with me because if you don't, I'll kill you, then it suddenly turns into a 4v1 and you say, prove it. And, uh... You do. Because why, why would you travel with a psycho? Or why would you travel with an instigator that is so murderous that something like that can set him off? I mean, th that stuff gets you arrested or worse in town. It gives your party a bad reputation. Now, if that's the theme of the if that's the theme of the story, then by all means, it, evil campaigns exist, and I could very much see if this is an evil campaign, which I don't think it is, but it has turned into. Um, you know, I I could see in an evil campaign, yeah, I mean, bad guys are gonna fight amongst each other, and they're gonna they're gonna pull their swords out to see whose is the biggest, and uh, and go from there. Well, I mean, at least with a character like that being so murderous. Uh, <laughs> Joe Star says, Yeah, I said the exact same thing to him and us as a group. Uh, we're willing to kick him out of the party, but in-game he was protected by plot armor and other stuff. Since two out of five characters in the party can't kick him out for reasons like being related and making promises. Well, then it, it comes down to this. does the character Is the character abusing the relation or the promise because you can break a promise and if you say oh yes I, I will protect you and suddenly your ward is going around instigating uh, fights and murdering people has your ward actually broken the promise on their end first and just because you're related to someone doesn't mean you can't murk them for being a murderer um, however if, if the DM is protecting this player and saying no you can't do that then you're you're going to be facing a meta conversation with your DM, and you're going to be saying, "I can't do this. This is not the game I want to play. I'm not having fun. I am not having fun, Mister or Ms. DM." And so something needs to change, or I'm going to leave. I say that respectfully. This is your game. I want you to run your game as you want. However, I'm not having fun, and you know what? When this one ends, give me a call. I'll be around for the next one. I really want to play. But I can't play in a game like this. I, I just can't do it. Can it be tough to bring up and have that conversation? Possibly. But you gotta do it. Because otherwise you're wasting your you're wasting your time. You're wasting your life. Showing up on time. Uh, you know, you you're going over to your local game store or a friend's house or whatever, or you're inviting people to your house. Only to just sit there and waste your time not having fun. And every week it just gets worse and worse. No game is better than a bad game. Memory says, In truth, the players that are not power gaming can actually at times be the best tool that a DM can use to slow down the pace of things against power games. Not only this, outside of using the other players, you as a DM can, again, as Maddie said, put things in the power gamer's way that won't be so easy to deal with. Do 
Diadem's party leader in the game I play is a psychotic gnome fighter. I mean, that being said, is that causing a problem, Diadem's? Or is that actually like a, a linchpin of the game that is uh, a necessity? So, uh, hopefully, uh, hopefully you're getting some good advice, uh, Joestar. And absolutely, keep any questions coming, keep any um, situations or concerns coming. Just because I'm, I'm making a presentation up here doesn't mean uh, you have to just sit there and be quiet and only, you know, only speak when spoken to by me. Um, Joestar, you and the others in the chat are the stars of, of the channel. You're the stars of the show here. And I'm very happy we are able to help you out with your situation. Does the mysterious Eel Inn have room for passengers, so not a restaurant, but more a hotel? So some PCs might be passengers and not crew. Well, yeah, it, I, although I don't know if, if the mysterious Eel itself has rooms. It might have some rooms to rent for an evening, if you get what I'm saying. But I think the ship itself has its has uh, quarters for crew and, and passengers. So I don't think it's a formal inn. Joe Star says, yeah, I remember the large arc we had as a party was on a boat in an anti-magic prison full of puzzles. Oh, and I was a bard lock who was basically Elvis. <laughs> uh, King, this is why it's important to understand the specific way a character is broken. Go ahead and play a vampire. The plot is that the sun never sets and the gods are dead. You can full attack for 500d6 damage. Cool, my game is uh, mook heavy and you'll always be severely outnumbered. Yeah, so if you're throwing a bunch of minions at someone who just likes throwing big dice and multiple dice around, it's going to be a lot tougher to uh, to uh, stroke that ego when all you have to do is hit or miss. Not a real problem per se, but running the character is doing an amazing job at role playing the psychotic gnome. Well, if everyone's having if everyone's having fun, then whatever, it's fine. King, also, the major players in your world might be rather wary of a vampire wandering around. If that's the kind of power they have, then there would be defenseless. Hi, Journey. We are giving out some... Uh, we're, we're having some advice about what to do. Uh, well, well, actually, we're doing two things. So in chat, we're, we're giving uh, Lycan the Joestar uh, advice on how to handle a power gamer in his or her group. On screen... We are building the outline for a campaign aboard a large bio ship that's actually a great old one. Like, a, you know, as in the Warlock Pact Giver. Think like the, the Farscape spaceship, if you're familiar. And so for the methodology for this campaign outline, where last week we used what I called the midpoint method, this time we're using what I call the Star Trek method. And so every level, or for every level milestone, the party's going to be sent out on some kind of an away mission, or they could even stay aboard the ship. And so something maybe isolated will happen, as well as we're going to tuck in a plot point that's going to be an overarching plot uh, to the end. Um, and then in between, you know, we'll, we'll have time skips and things like that. So it'll be, the campaign will be run kind of like a season of Star Trek. Uh, he had one of the most OP abilities where he could basically never die due to the fact when he hit zero hit points, he basically materializes back to his last resting point for around six hours of rest. Yeah, I'm, so if you have a character that can't die and deals infinite damage and, you know, is a vampire and is invincible and is related to important people and has favors owed, um, we're, we're treading into some territory of a character type that's called a Mary Sue. Um, or some people might call him like a Gary Stu. Um, basically said to my DM, are you kidding me? The player has no downsides and you keep giving him stuff? Uh, yeah. <laughs> you tell Steve, presuming that that's the name. Journeyman, whoa! You don't so, but you have my $5 brother. Thank you very much. Thank you. 
That means a lot to me, man. Um, yeah, Lycan, look. If you're not having fun, don't play that game. Even if it's the only D&D &D game around for 100 miles, if you're not having fun, and it's in the show is all about this invincible Mary Sue vampire who can just get away with murder uh, and all this other stuff, you can do better. You can find better. Journey, that's... Uh, thank you very much. And by the way, uh, a shout-out to uh, a shout out to Journeyman. If you want to put a link up, by the way, I, I don't have a shout-out command like you do. Um, <laughs> or one that uh, that Zulerpai, uh, you know, because he, he's a very good uh, doorman who greets everyone in your channel. Uh, definitely a shout-out to Journeyman, who does a lot of great art and has some great conversation, as well as some wonderful rants. It, I, I say that lovingly, man. Um... Oh, God. <laughs> hey, Tracy, good to see you. Uh, he is currently working on uh, artwork for a, a Lamentation of the Flame Princess module. And uh, this is this will be the second time he's teamed up with them. And I certainly hope you get a lot more jobs, man, because um, <laughs> Lamentations is definitely up your alley as far as concept and, you know, the way you present. Uh, and and I, th I think it gives you a lot more freedom, too. Kind of like what you're talking about in your channel. Like, yeah, I do comics, but I don't want to draw Spider-Man. I totally understand that. Even, uh, I mean, even as someone who sells comics, right? There you go, Zuller Pie. Thank you. That's right, you put J-Man on blast. You show him his place here. Being a friend and a part of the community and productive and an awesome dude. That's right, J Man. I'm on to you. I called you out. What you gonna do about it, huh? 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 <laughs> Memory lapse? Oh, yeah, you know what? That is a pun pun, isn't it? Um, like, and if you don't know what a pun pun is, look it up. Um, and it might resonate all too well. I want to do something really funny and actually worked. We made him rest in a wooden lifeboat. So when he materialized, we detached the thing from the boat and left him in an island. Oh, uh, J-Man, of course. Uh, I'm... I would be a huge hypocrite if I just was austere. Oh, well, phew, phew, horror and in clowns and and in in you know a goblin dangling people over a kraken in its imagination and oh well, I never. I'm gonna go back to selling my magic cards. <laughs> I mean, come on. Uh, no, I'm totally open-minded. Um, you know, and and I I'm the first one there, man, to remind you no nipples. <laughs> I don't want you getting in trouble. <laughs> murdering people. You know, murdering people on Twitch. I mean, not like live stream, hopefully, but like in games and everything. Rampant murder. Heck, even playing God of War. And, and there's a lot of scenes with boobies and whatever. Witcher 3. But man, if you draw one backwards C, one backwards lowercase C, gonzo, brother, Yeah, I ban in the group. I feel so much better, but I miss my kid. Yeah, and you know what, Joe Star? It that sucks that you had to abandon your group. But you know what? You are gonna feel better for it as a person, and especially when you can get into a game that allows you that allows your character to grow and not be stifled because it's the vampire show and everyone else just shows up to support the vampire. So, all I can say, and in all fairness, Joestar, I hope you did it tactfully, and I hope that you were polite about it. Oh, good. You found a new group. 
Good, 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 good. And you know what? Hey, Joe Star, keep coming back and letting us know how it goes. Oh, Thank you. <laughs> man. <laughs> Aw. Thank you, brother. I very much appreciate that. Your DM is a Twitch streamer, much like yourselves, uh, in the form of content. Oh, good, good. Okay. So then hopefully he's a little bit more... I mean, I'll say fair and balanced. I, I hope that doesn't, like, upset anyone. <laughs> but I think you get what I'm saying. Uh, hope... <laughs> um, you know, hopefully he has that... Uh, he or she has that, uh, that long view... I want to run a solid game. It's not about me favoring a friend who's playing a Mary Sue character or anything along those lines. Dark Wolf, lend me your power. Good. Good, Joe Star. Well, explore them and savor, savor being able to do so now, Joe Star. Right? You've earned it. You've you tried playing them and things happened. Well, now you know what you found a new adopted group, and and revel in it. Even if you are this cantankerous, grumpy old you know daughter. D o t you know d o t t e r. D o d d daughtering d o d d e r. Anyway, you get what I'm saying. Um, you're just a misanthropic old uh, fart. Get into the character, role play it, use an accent, uh, you know, bring some props or a hat or something, and just have fun. Have fun. To touch back quickly, again, you all over here are very important, okay? You are, um, you are, you are the bread and butter of the channel, and I hope that we're having great conversations and I'm answering your questions. And not just me, Joe. This is a group effort. You have so many people over here who've played different games and for different lengths of time, you'll get a buffet of advice. Because... I can tell you, I can give you some suggestions, and you can say, eh, that won't work. And someone else uh, in the in the channel will give you something, you say, yes, that's golden. Mwah, molto bene. And, and you go with that. I'm not offended at all by that. We're here as a community. Joestar, you are sitting at a, at a chair, at a table at a game store, and we're just, we're talking D&D &D as a bunch of friends in that environment. Oh, well, then you have a spotlight, uh, Joe Star, with that kind of a makeup, it, it sounds like. Enjoy it, man. Hit that roll hard. <laughs> That's great. Banter can be a lot of fun. That's awesome, man. If, if you play, by the way, uh, Joe Star. If you play on Twitch under this DM, please provide a, pre, a, provide a link over to his or your channel, whoever's broadcasting it. On our Discord, we have a section where you can uh, list up uh, Twitch channels as a community promotion. And uh, maybe you could bring some of us along for that ride as well to enjoy it alongside you. Um, if your name is different on Discord than it is on Twitch, uh, in Discord, Please, uh, please sync them up. Please change it. And if you don't know how, let a moderator know and we'll take care of it. And Diadems is going on an adventure. There's a warg. 19. Nice. That advantage works. Um, Dark Wolf. Diadems gets 125 experience points. 
Plus, I don't know if you're still running your summer festival challenge or not, Dark Wolf. So if we look here at this at this campaign outline, uh, we have it, it's an episodic adventure that still has a a carryover plot point. Yeah, if you all do, let us know. We're we're all in this together. I want to help as many roleplay streamers as possible. If you want to do an episodic campaign. That's perfectly fine, and it could be a lot of fun, because it is a break from the traditional method of we're just going to play for a year, year and a half, and everything flows continuously. Oh, you just play over uh, Discord? Yeah, I, I, there's some interactive sheets that you can use through Discord, if I recall correctly, Joestar. And yeah, Joestar, if you look at the commands down below, you can go on little adventures here. You can pull from the deck of many things. Um, there, there's a lot of fun stuff you can do here in chat. Uh, good advice, DM. Or uh, memory lapse. Good advice. For an episodic campaign, there are at least two things that you need. What What is the episodic action? What is the goal? For instance, if, if this is level one, right? And so here's our first mission. Level one, our episode is um, disembark the cascade to scour a tropical island for fresh food it's a one sentence summary and if you want to make it more specific uh, you can say um, I don't know specifically 500 pounds of meat and uh, I need and we need you to find a natural source uh, like a spring of fresh water so that we can refill our, our bladders because look if it's a bio ship it doesn't have barrels it probably is storing fresh water in some kind of a stomach or a barrel, or not a barrel, a uh, um, a bladder or something. But the, what is going to happen on the episode is it's going to be based around what? Survival and foraging, maybe some hunting. Um, and, and you could break it down. So th this is it. Disembark the Cascade to scour Tropical Line for fresh food. You can do uh, things like themes. Survival. Hunting, perhaps some traps. There you go. Good, solid level one adventure, right? Hunt down like a wild boar. It has a decent uh, stat block to challenge level one uh, characters, and you go from there. Now, over the course of the hunt, because it could take several sessions to meet the goals of the mission... If that's the case, choose what you want the plot advancement to be. And you have uh, you have a lot to work with, right? Look, from from the worksheet we did, there's a current calamity that we're gonna have to uh, we're gonna have to weave into things. Um, so if we do that, there's corrupt officials. So maybe the plot advancement is uh, sometime over the hunt. The players see some officers uh, doing something not proper. But the officers can laugh or explain it away to not seem too odd. And so now you've you, we've planted the seed, right? So they saw two officers. Maybe they snuck on. Uh, they snuck off the ship for a little snoo snoo. Uh, maybe they're actually making deals uh, with uh, some native islanders, or maybe they're making deals with a rival crew of another ship or something. Who knows? But sometime during the several 
the several weeks or you know if you're playing on a weekly basis through the several sessions it takes to get through the survival hunting some traps and, and exploration uh, this plot advancement occurs and so now we've we've planted this seed that we can grow in future episodes So they do that, and congratulations, some time passes, maybe it's a couple weeks, it could even be a month. Whatever that you feel is appropriate, right? Every episode of, of Star Trek isn't one day after the, uh, one star date. One star date exactly after the last uh, the last episode ended. You know, time passes, things things change. And so now you have these uh, now you have these level two characters who want to go to level three. You know, and, and, and so what do you do here? Maybe in this case we have a, um, the episodic action is, some, ah, a fight breaks out between a group of tabaxi and kenku passengers. It must be quelled, hopefully, diplomatically. So here we go. At some point in time, the Cascade has picked up a group of tabaxi and a group of kenku. Cats and birds, they're gonna fight. Um, so here we have themes, diplomacy, perhaps some combat, right? Even if it's to subdue someone, um, because remember, you don't have to merc everyone in combat. You have the option, especially if we're playing with melee characters, you have the option to hit them with a the flat ear blade and just simply knock them out. So here we, you know, here we can see a little action and hopefully some diplomacy. And this is a this is on board the ship. I keep dropping hints. Maybe the Cascade has pleasure droids like the Red Dwarf uh, one. Maybe they're not. Uh, maybe they are not uh, shared fairly, creating conflicts. Yeah. Well, that look. You have a crew that big. It's good to have an outlet of some kind, right? Right? Wink, wink. That many people aboard a, you know, a, a, a semi or fully sentient bio ship aircraft carrier. Especially uh, given the fact that it's all not just men or whatever. You know, men and women of all different races and sizes and whatever. Having that, having kind of a blow-off valve aboard that ship is important for, uh, for morale. So now we have some plot advancement, and let's let's hook in one of our players, right? Um, this one, I work the land, I love the land, I'll protect it. Uh, the drow might actually be, uh, Jaren might be involved in this quest. And if that's the case, then let's look at someone else. Um... Who can we weave in here as the plot advancement? Ah, here we go. Hamish. In a harbor town, I have a paramour whose eyes nearly stole me from the sea. So, uh, during this event, Hamish will hear his lover's name mentioned being in... the next... Port of call for the Cascade. Ooh, fluffy sheep, too. Well, you didn't fall on your sword, but you may as well have. Dark Wolf, if you want to share the name, you're welcome to do so. I, I trust you. Don't worry about it. This is PG-13, not PG or G.
And then, if, uh, by the way, I'm leaving this blank, but you can go through, and a good way to help present the theme, even if in a meta sense you want to break the fourth wall and tell your players, are you ready? Th this is your mission. It is, well, let's see. Survival hunting, some traps. Um... So this could, I, I don't know, you can even just call this uh, restocking... The Cascade. Simple, right? Encounter at Farpoint was the first TNG episode. And that's what it was. Oh, I like that. That's clever, Dark Wolf. <laughs> it is, that is clever. You're good, you. You're good. So as you can see, each of these missions, we can focus on something different. Um, look, so we, we've had some diplomacy and combat. We've had survival and hunting. What about something like a skill challenge, right? Episodic action. The cascade was involved in a major storm that has broken several of its um several of its I don't know we'll just say major components so now this level we're going to have an extended skill challenge uh which uh because it it doesn't even have to just take one episode like one sit down at your tabletop uh, during the week. We could have several. And um, and a skill challenge can also involve um, narrative combat, right? So if we do something like a skill challenge, narrative combat, where you don't really roll dice, you just say what you're doing. Um, narrative combat and um, maybe even some um, socialization. See, there you go, Dark Wolf. Uh, Zuller Pie loves it too. And I guess Coffee Cat does, <laughs> even with that remark. That is a very clever name, though. Plot advancement? Well, let's. Uh, we can weave in something else now. So we have a. Um, we've planted the seed. That there's this, um, an, well, there's a feared tyrant. Um, that there are corrupt officials. In this point here, skill challenge, narrative combat, socialization. Um, during this, during these sessions it takes in order to clear this, uh, this episode. The party realizes that some of the crew, including the ones found on the island aren't doing their jobs at all or properly. But the emergency situation and a blow-off excuse um, keep them from investigating too much right now so there we go congratulations we went from level three to four and this happened at some other point in time again these are episodic uh these are episodic missions and these missions act as milestones and every milestone might take a couple weeks if you play once a week each one of these could take a couple weeks, a month, month and a half to get through, depending on the level of detail or the amount of combat. Because if you think about it, look, a combat eats up a ton of time at the tabletop, you know, in, in real time. However, a combat is maybe what? I mean, a combat's over. Most combats are over in a minute or so. 
in game time. But even with some fallout and a little bit of roleplay afterwards, how much time has passed? Five, ten minutes, an hour? You know, with the, with the fallout of that? Yet that was your session for the week and only ten minutes have advanced inside the game. There are a lot of different systems that chop up the concept of a narratively important encounter and make it into a meta mechanic. Like Riddle of Steel gives you spiritual attributes, and when you encounter something important to your character, you get bonus dice to roll. Well, wait, is that comment? I'm sorry, is that commentary on what we're doing here, or are you still addressing? Um, are, were you still addressing um, memory lapse above? Gotcha. Okay. Gotcha, gotcha. Uh, let's see. The episodic action. Unfortunately, you do not get the bonus EXP. Uh, wah, wah, wah. Try again. Episodic action. So, uh, the brothel above the mysterious eel. Suddenly can't keep patrons because it is considered to be haunted. Sure. What's a one... Just just think of something, right? These, these This is episodic. As a DM, we know the story we're trying to tell with our plot advancement, but how can we hide that inside of something? And so now, all of a sudden, the brothel's haunted. And this is... Uh, and so the themes... Investigation... Some combat. High magic. Plot advancement. Who could work with that? Maybe, maybe Nieus can. All right, we have this way of shadow monk who's an acolyte. I quote sacred texts. And so he, he ends up wanting to be the Ghostbuster. <laughs> Zuller pie. <laughs> yes, indeed. <laughs> oh. So here we have another. Uh, we have a, a plot advancement that is going to touch on uh, Nias specifically, or is going to feature more of Nias. Because look. In Star Trek episodes, you may have seen, they focus on one or a, or a handful of characters at a time, and it's just sort of, you know, it's like drawn out of a hat. What what happens, what happens, what happens. So the plot advancement here, I'm suspicious of strangers and expect the worst of them. Uh, maybe this is... Um, Niesa's flaw is confronted as he must be surrounded by strangers and even invoke their help to try driving off the spooks. Mission 5. Episodic action. The captain has called for a raid on a ship spotted at sea.
themes. Big fight. Big fight. Netone Roller, thank you very much for the follow. Thank you for coming along the journey with us, man. Man or ma'am. I'm sorry. Person. Individual. <laughs> if I mispronounced your name, let me know how to pronounce it, and I'll do my best to remember that and uh, continue addressing you as such. Plot advancement. Showcase the captain's tyrannic, if not evil, personality in order to set up a moral conflict later with the corrupt officers on board. So here, not only are we, we're just going to focus, this is a pure fight, a big fight, maybe in several stages, because look, the Cascade is a big ship. Yeah, it'll just roll up, but it, it do you want to destroy the thing you want to, uh, to loot or plunder, uh, uh, or to loot, to loot or plunder? No, he's going to send down a strike team of sorts in order to try and infiltrate as best as possible. Maybe they'll even, like, lower a rowboat, and in the middle of the night, you know, this strike team of the party needs to go over. But here's the thing. He gives them orders that no one is to live. If you sneak aboard in the middle of the night, you need to cut their throats so they don't ever wake up again. I want this clean, I want this quiet, and I want everything aboard. I just don't want to handle the extra people. So now, here we have at least two members of the party who are, I mean, they're good aligned. They are members of the crew in some way. And you even have this lawful neutral character, Tyrael, who might not necessarily want to just, you know, sneak aboard a ship and slit everyone's throats. But look, look at her flaw. I follow orders even if I think they're wrong. So not only are we are we showcasing or we're setting up a juxtaposition for the big conflict, which is perhaps going to be a mutiny that the players can be a, a you know they can side on uh, on one or the other based on actions. Um, but yet, if they if they accomplish this task, they'll be heavily rewarded by the captain with rank or pay or I don't know extra rations or better quarters or things like that. Right, because they're they're proving themselves they're proving themselves loyal, even given commands such as kill everyone aboard as swiftly and quietly as you can. So really, what that can turn into, we can say it's a big fight, and maybe it even ends as a big fight. But think of it this way: if it's a sneaking mission, would that would that ship be considered a dungeon in its own fashion? Here we have a dungeon crawl at sea. Eh? Eh? I don't know. Is that inspiring? Is that cool? Are you hip? Are you with it? Whoa. So now after something so serious and something that's made our, our players question themselves, their fellow crewmates, or their captain, or their other officers here, um, what if we just kind of have a, uh, what if we have a, a decompression, right? It's maybe more of a comical episode. Maybe it's a little lighter. It's, it's, it's a beach episode, right? It's a hot springs episode. And it could be something as simple as, um, let's see, Tyrael's the one with the bond directly with the ship, although Jaren is also, 
So, why don't we set up a rivalry of some kind? If this is... If this is a kind of a hot springs episode here, right? You get you get all the players and they're separated by the bamboo curtain, or the bamboo wall. Um, Tyrael and Jaren get into a friendly argument about their patrons during a trip to an island hot springs which turns into a race to the top of the volcano to obtain a MacGuffin they heard about and to prove who is stronger. Themes, this could be a this could be a skill challenge, some combat, uh, or even a pursuit to run a race. Which was a very fun, impromptu thing that I did in uh, in one of our prior Curse of Strahd um, games. Is uh, we actually had a foot race through a town, and uh, I used the pursuit rules in order to conduct that, and it was a lot of fun. And and again, here's another mechanic to the game that that we haven't explored yet. I mean, you know, we've had some combat, we've had a skill challenge, but we haven't run a pursuit or a race. Plot advancement. What kind of a plot advancement are we building here? Oh, you know what? With all we're talking about what happens to people in the... Uh, with what happens to people aboard the ship, because the ship itself might be eating the crew as they grow old, or even if they're not old, then they're infirm, or they're just not... They're not important enough. Plot advancement. At the top of the volcano, evidence is found about the true nature of the cascade bonding tie to Jaren as Jaren has already accepted the fact his soul will burn out under his patron's orders or powers or something. Whereas Ty thought she would forever be in the service to the Cascade. So maybe they find a cave or something at the top of this mountain or volcano and a survivor or something, you know, a, like a hermit of some kind, living or dead or undead, is up there and and offers them something to kind of shake to shake them up. It'll bond the two warlocks together, uh, despite other differences, because now it seems that the great old one, that the Cascade might actually end up consuming its crew. So where Jaren said, look, I serve a fiend. I, I, f I, I went into this bargain knowing that I was going to be burned up and consumed in the service to my patron. And here we have young Tyriel, who's, you know, I, what is she, 12, 13? She's like, yes, I got these powers. You know, I was chosen by the Cascade to serve. I'm on track of being an officer and all this great stuff. And all of a sudden, woo. What does that mean about the officers that were shirking their duties and not trying to help the the ship? In not trying to help the ship get better. Or something along those lines. What if she's facing now 
what what if this girl who is like at the, at the top of the world, literally and metaphorically, is now facing a doom and a, a, a lethality that she had never considered before? Make you think? Is it compelling? Does it bring character development? If you were playing these characters and this plot bomb just dropped on you, would you find that entertaining? Would you want to show up next week to play? I mean, speaking of, because, you know, Memory Lapse and King were kind of having a, a, a continued conversation, if you all have been reading it on the side, um, after after the prompts from uh, Joestar. Um, would you continue playing in this? Would you want to stay tuned and find out what happens in the next episode? Oh, I understand that uh, memory lapse. And by the way, that's a good meta conversation to have too. Um, healer's kit dependency, slow natural healing, gritty realism, food and water. You know, these are toggle switches or difficulty modes for a, for a game. And it is something important to discuss with your players as a DM to make sure that they're comfortable playing with these circumstances. Um, pardon me. Well, I, I think that you, you get the gist of what we're going for here. And you can possibly see where it's building. I think what I'll do is... Um, I mean, we could finish it in part three. I don't necessarily mind. I still have a little bit more energy. For any of you who are new here, um, or, or, or even if you're just a newcomer for the evening, um, I, I was kind of sick this morning, and I was kind of like, mm, I don't know. So I've been nursing myself. I, I slept a bunch. I've, I've been you know eating some softer stuff. Um, but uh, I... For part two that we're doing here, I think I illustrated uh, the technique. And so I'm going to end part two. I'm going to get up, um, walk around a little bit more, use the restroom and such. Um, you all can too. And we'll come back and we can continue talking. We can continue filling out the campaign. And um, what I will do is I'll put, the, I'll put a, a total campaign concept on our Discord if you wanted to download it, consider it, and even run something like that yourself. Mission 4 might be tied back to Mission 1 if the officers stole an artifact from a temple instead of getting provisions as they were supposed to. The artifact starts to glow over time and causes the ghosts. Hey, there you go, Zuller Pie. That's, uh, not... Yeah, 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 yeah. Nice as Flaws confronted. Um, Alright, so... Finds out it was from angry ghosts of a stolen artifact that matched the themes of Mission 1's island. Very cool, very cool. All right, everyone hang tight. I'm gonna get up and take a break. And then when we come back, it's like, we'll talk a little bit, you know, we'll still have fun. I mean, Memory and King, you guys are having an awesome conversation. Zuller Pie, thank you for that suggestion and kind of weaving everything together. And it, it sounds like you're really on board with this, uh, with also with this style of, uh, of storytelling, uh, not just the midpoint method that I, I think that you enjoyed also last week. So I will be back in uh, in a little bit. All right, that's right. I, I popped at you. <laughs>